talk a little bit about the kind of fandom that you guys encountered with this too, because it's, I mean, that is, I mean, obviously we have our own rock bands that we revere. I can't think of anything that responds like that though. And which may also be the nature of the Japanese culture. I don't know, but it's like, you know, what, what was your perception? I don't know if it's the nature of the Japanese culture per se. Um, because there are a multitude of rock bands that have come out of Japan that have m many different kinds of fan bases. It's them. Um, it's very different. I mean, the film I did just previous was about the Backstreet Boys. Anybody? Yes. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, they show up, they scream, and then they go away. I mean, it's, it's very much, you know, it's the boy band. It's like that pubescent love. It's, it's a sex drive kind of concept. With X Japan, it's religious. I mean, you see it. It's it. That was one of the also the shocking things was to see it over and over and over and over and over again. That I mean, talk about like a cult, right? It's almost like its own kind of rock cult. And Yoshiki's the savior. He he really is actually. I mean, in so many ways, um, over and over and over again, the just the little sampling of fans that you see are really representative of a whole of people who claim over and over again, that the music has saved their lives. Um, it has saved people from suicide. It has gotten through people through illnesses and deaths. And they just, they, they cling to it as some kind of lifeline. And it seems like to be this kind of weird feedback loop. It's like it's literally keeping Yoshiki alive, who, by all accounts, should have disintegrated long ago with all the cortisone shots and the neck brace and all this stuff. How is he still living and making music, right? And not eating carbohydrates for whatever and not reason. not eating carbs. What's wrong with you? Um, okay. Yeah. Or sleeping. Okay. He literally lives on red wine and adrenaline. Um, it's crazy. Um, and it's, it's over and over again. Now, a lot of them are my Twitter followers. And they're so passionate. And, but you seeing it up close is really something. And we don't exaggerate it or kind of amplify it through the edit. I think we've just created a, a, a representative sample of that level of passion. And I've really never seen anything quite like it, to be honest. What kind of, I mean, it's not really clear to me by the end if, you know, how strong Yoshiki really is by the end. Is he, I can't tell if the band is feeding him or depleting him. Mm -hmm. Well, he, he always jokes that he himself is actually a vampire. Um, and I, I might believe it, um, but it's it's sort of what he said actually, which is quite interesting. Is he he said by watching the movie, and he said this in Q and A's, he says like, wow, I think I'm actually not as weak as I thought I was. Like it's actually shown him himself. Um, and yeah, I, I I don't know. I I think he's gonna do it until he can't do it anymore. I, th I, I don't know. I think he's superhuman. There's some kind of reserve in there that keeps... It's the fans. Like, literally, when they said they keep us alive, I I've seen it. Like, I think it's true that as long as they're out there demanding it and kind of feeding off it, it's going to push him... It's going to push him forward. I mean, physically, he's he's kind of pushing at the limits a little bit. But, um, man, I don't know. He just did, like, three nights uh, about two weeks ago. They Extra Band headlined a huge rock fest in, J in Japan, all the visual K-bands, uh, a festival that Yoshigi organized, extra pan headlight, three nights in a row. And uh, two days later, he was back in America promoting the movie. And I don't know, it seemed fine to me. Vampire, yeah. Vampire. Yeah. 